So I think the idea of goal setting in the Western world is rubbish. Because here's what happened. When you ask people to set goals, even if you teach them methodologies like SMART, smart goal setting, you are basically encouraging people to set goals based on that same culture scape with its restricting rules. So people, especially in the United States, set goals along the lines of this. Okay, we need to get good grades so I can graduate high school, so I can get into a good college, need to study hard to get a good GPA, so maybe I can go to graduate school, uh, so maybe I can do well in my LSAT, that becomes the next goal, get into law school, the next goal, graduate from law school, get into a partnership, become a lawyer. And that's how teenagers often think about mm. their life, these series of like ticks that they have to go through. But here's what happens. Let's actually look at that. Let's look at lawyers. 50% of lawyers in America are clinically depressed. It's not just the US, I think Australia did a similar study. So why are kids going into these professions where they end up in, in a job that they thought was a good goal at one point, mm. only to find themselves absolutely miserable? And I say that with some confidence because I, at a certain point, was working in the legal industry. I was selling technology to law firms, and I would speak to lawyers on the phone and diagnose what was going on in their, in, in, in their law firms, and it was shocking how many of them actually hated their jobs and wanted to quit. But why is it that teenagers go into these roles? Now, it's not, just law, it's not just lawyers. We set our goals to have two cars and a house of a certain size, to be in a marriage. It's because these goals aren't coming from inside us. They're coming from the culture scape. And the culture scape is basically a safety net mechanism. You see, for the longest time in human history, we had to watch out for each other. There were wars, there were disease. Go back a thousand years, there were wild animals that might kill you. So you had to follow certain rules of the culture scape to stay safe. Right. Among these were get a good education so you are not stuck in a factory job so that you can have a blue collar job. It was get married. So if you're a woman, you have a man to provide for you. It was have five kids, because you know, if you go back 50 years ago, um, infant mortality was so much higher. You had five kids, two were gonna probably pass away. But the problem is, people continue with these same rules in today's world right. when everything has changed. So the quest, so the thing is, I don't believe in goal setting, because when you teach traditional goal setting, people are locked into the rules of the culture scape. So here's what I suggest. I suggest we ask ourselves three questions, and I call these the three most important questions. Now the first question is this, it's what experiences do I want to have? Okay, now I'll tell you why that's important. You see, there are two types of goals. There are means goals and there are end goals. So people tend to chase means goals, not realizing these are very different from end goals. A means goal is do well in my LSAT, graduate from college, get that particular job, save up for retirement. But if you ask these people, why do you want that? There's always a so. Well, I want to I wanna, I wanna qualify for college, so I can do this. Right. I want to get it, want to become a lawyer so I can do this. Well, the so leads you to the end goal. Now, what are end goals? End goals are these things that really lead to the, the beauty of being human. It's waking up next to someone you madly love. It's holding your first child in your arms. It's having a puppy. It's seeing your business open for the first time. It's making that, you know, getting that first customer. It's completing your first book. It's creating a work of art and having people admire it and fall in love with it. These are end goals. So what I advocate is, and the three most important question is, forget the means goals. Means goals are goals designed by the culture scape. Instead, go straight to the end goals. Now the first question you ask yourself to identify your end goals is, what experiences do I want to have in life? And this is where you start writing down your experiences. And um, you know, when I do this exercise, I ask people to take out a piece of paper, draw three columns. So if you're watching, do that right now. Take out a piece of paper, three columns. Top of the first column, you're gonna write down experiences, right? And ask yourself, what experiences do I wanna have? Who do I wanna wake up with? What type of house do I wanna live in? What countries do I wanna visit? Where do I wanna um, travel to? What adventures do I wanna have? Whether it's climbing Mount Kinabalu or hiking the Andes. What type of family life do I want? What dog do I want? The beautiful thing about experiences is often, they don't require that much money. It's crazy, we associate money with happiness, but often the most beautiful experiences in life require no money. Almost any human being today can fall in love, can make a baby. These are some of the most profound experiences I've had. So the first thing is you make a list of your experiences. Now the second thing is you ask yourself this question. For me to be the man or woman who has all of these experiences, how do I have to grow? And here we come to the second list. See, I believe 
We are souls having a human experience here on planet Earth. But these souls are not just here to explore all of these wonderful things about being human. I believe as, as souls, as human beings, we crave growth. Human beings are growth-driven machines. And so you make that second list. And that second list is, how do I want to grow? How can I learn to be a better father, a better spouse, a better lover? What languages do you want to learn? Do you want to learn a musical instrument? Do you want to learn to write? Do you want to learn um, to play a particular sport or learn a particular skill? What many people don't realize about the world is that growth is a goal in itself. It's one of the key things that drive us forward as human beings, but very few people write down growth as goals. It's because our education system, which tries to teach us to grow through forced learning, makes many people dread learning. So growth becomes that second list. Now you have two lists, your experiences and your growth. Now you ask yourself the third question, and the third question is this, to be that man or woman who has all of these experiences, to be that man or woman who has grown in such a way, how can I give back to the world? And there's a very important reason for that question. The Dalai Lama said, if you want to be happy, make other people happy. And I believe that when you do these three most important questions, that third category is what truly leads to fulfillment. It's when you can take your growth, you can take your experiences and contribute to fellow souls, contribute to the human race. You've learned entrepreneurship, great, mentor someone, mentor a kid who wants to get there. You, um, you have the ability to um, sing, figure out how to use it to deliver you know, beautiful music, to inspire people. So your list of contributions becomes your steps for you to give back to the world because that takes you beyond pure happiness into fulfillment. Now when you have this list, experiences, growth, and contribution, this becomes your goal list. Everything else is just a means goal. Now when I started creating this, I found that it allowed me to rewire my brain, to shortcut and bypass so many bullshit rules, to go straight to these final items, to go straight to ways I could contribute, ways I could grow, ways I could have these beautiful experiences. And often these were unconventional parts. Like when I started my company, I didn't work with any investors or VCs. Um, I decided to start my own university, which is happening in Barcelona, but it all came because when you have done the three most important questions, you get to short circuit the rules of the culture scape and figure out shorter paths towards true human fulfillment. You can meet some pretty big goals and you can reach some milestones and have some highlights and then there's always something else. There's mm -hmm. always something else. Now you can always feel like you're failing or like you're not here that they're not there yet or you're falling behind or you can say, you know what, this is actually the landscape of life is how can I be as fully present in this moment and have so much fun and squeeze every drop out of my life knowing um, it's not going to last that long. Mm -hmm. And like we don't know, could get hit by a bus tomorrow and to feel any sort of consistent angst like you're not good enough or you're not there yet is such a disrespect to this precious life that we have. Mm -hmm. And so there's always going to be other things to create and achieve, um, but it can never be better than it is right now if you really, really let yourself experience how good it is. So many of us can think in our minds like, okay, I'm dissatisfied, I'm, I'm not fulfilled, I don't know what I want to do, but we try and think our way into an answer rather than start getting into action yeah. to try different things, to sample them. Yeah. You can take a class, you can take a physical class, you can read a book, you can start talking to people. There are so many different strategic ways to engage in an idea without quitting your job, without putting yourself at risk, um, without doing anything that would jeopardize your well-being in the mm -hmm. current moment, but set yourself up for success, you know, down the line. I think it's all about quality of life, right? Mm -hmm. You take you wherever you go, and if in those moments you're doing a job that you're not really excited about, but you have to be there for eight hours, you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You're either going to be miserable for eight hours, mm -hmm. or you're going to engage like a champ. Right. And you're going to show up and be amazing. And I got to tell you, so many opportunities for me 
have come from me training myself to show up like a champ wherever I was. There are two kinds of wounds. There's the wound that makes you think you're less than others, and there's the wound that makes you think you're better than others. And the less than others, at least they know they have something to work toward or learn. The ones who are there have nothing to learn, and it's like the biggest tragedy because they just live their lives in the dark, thinking everything they do is great and ignoring all the results. So, uh, so there's probably something to be said positive for low self-esteem. I would probably say it's a combination of that, you know, the growth mindset idea, and also just learning from your experiences that uh, doing something and failing and letting that be a learning lesson. So letting the failure be a learning lesson, okay, I'm doing something wrong. Humility is the most important thing you can have to, for, for change if you really want to have a big change. Like little, a lot of people come just to hear what they already want to hear. Like codify this into five principles I can then apply to my life. Mm. You know, your codify is the word and I'll codify, I'll codify some self-awareness for you. Yeah. But, um, but humility to recognize you know, what got you here won't get you there, as the saying goes, right? And uh, to, say, to say at some point, if you really want to change and are really stuck, I know nothing, I'm letting go of everything, and I'm sort of gonna relearn as like a, with a childlike mind. Sometimes you're gonna be, have anxiety, sometimes you're gonna have fear, like we have many emotions, sometimes you're gonna, uh, and if you feel like I need to be happy all the time, uh, when you're not happy, you're gonna feel like something's off. So to me, one of my goals is acceptance. So I'm trying to reach a place of acceptance uh, in my life. So, but what I think, what I think of it is this, um, and someone said it in, in, in The Truth, which is you're, you're born pure and fresh and vulnerable and spontaneous and in the moment. And slowly through life experiences and your caregivers, you get loaded with a lot of baggage. And I think one of the goals of life is how much of that baggage can you cut away before you leave this planet? So the second skill is the art of fulfillment. If you want an extraordinary life, you can't just achieve, you gotta be fulfilled. As simplistic as that sounds, but it's an art. It's not a science. Sure. It's a science to making money, come on. Any age, any color, any background, any gender, if you do these things, you'll have an abundance of money. You do these things, you're gonna have too much month at the end of the money, you're gonna have financial stress, yeah. right? Body, everyone's biochemically different, but you and I both know there's fundamental rules, laws. There's a science to the body. You violate that science, you're gonna have disease, you're gonna have low energy. You align with that, you're gonna have an abundance of energy. It's gonna affect everything in your life. It's a science. Fulfillment's not like that. Fulfillment is as different as our human beings. You wanna know what God or the universe likes? Look at the jungle, look at the forest. Right. It's diverse, right. right? So most people think, well, I wanna get that, because they've been modeling somebody else, and that might work on how to achieve something. It'll never work for what to fulfill you. How many people you know, like you, got what you thought you wanted, and you weren't fulfilled? Right. And that, I always tell people, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure, the ultimate failure. Because if you go at something and you fail, and you're an achiever, you don't fail. You go, I learned something, I'll just try something else. Right. I'm gonna still get there. But when you succeed and you're not happy, you're technically screwed. Right. <laughs> it's just like, what are you gonna do? So the decisions we make control us much more than the conditions we meet. It's not the conditions, it's your decisions. Decisions of what to believe, decisions of what to do, decisions of what to give. I say to people, think about the most important decision you can make above any on the face of the earth is deciding that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens, you're gonna live in a beautiful state. And what the hell does that mean? It means that you're not gonna suffer. It means a beautiful state is that you're gonna be happy, and, but that's only one. Or you're gonna feel creative, or you're gonna be passionate, or you're gonna be in awe of something, or you're gonna feel love. Any state that's a beautiful state is really the core essence of who you are without fear, right? People that have everything, by your point of view, most people's point of view, they have the fame and they have the love and millions of people love them and they have great economics, financial freedom, and they have homes and they have, they have, they have the fashion, they have everything, they're the shit. I can't tell you how many of them are miserable. The majority are miserable, I'm not bullshitting. I'm the one who gets the phone call from the vast majority. When I say miserable, they're so used to it, some of them don't even realize they're miserable, right. but most do. They get in a place where it's like, how do I keep this up? How do I keep out doing myself? How do I, you know, I built these 32 companies, how to keep all 32 going and make them all grow every single year. And that's not how life is, right? right? And then they worry about what will people think? What will they do? So the decision to say, I am not gonna suffer. That if suffering arises, pain's one thing, suffering's another. And the way you suffer is you focus on yourself. Right. Suffering comes when we obsess about ourselves 
what we're getting or not getting, what we should have done, what we sh others should have done for us. It's the me, 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 me game. Suffering could be worry, could be anger, could be frustration. It's anything that takes you out of a beautiful state. And right. here's what people don't get. You can end suffering by stop focusing on yourself and focus on something you want to serve greater than yourself. Your children, your wife, your mission, your life. You can get out of it in an instant because the nature of the human mind is to constantly compare things. Your mind, your brain is a two million year old device and it is not designed to make you happy. It's designed to make you, it's designed to make you survive. Right. And that's why it's always looking for what's wrong. But it used to be what's wrong is saber tooth tiger so I can protect myself. Now right. people are worried about what people think about them or do they have enough money when two thirds of the planet lives on $2 a day right. and you're making $38,000, you're rich. The poorest right. of the poor in our country are considered rich. That's not, I'm not saying they should stay that way. Right. But you can only build on success. And so my view is, if you're watching, if you're listening to this, my goal would have you consider something. Life is short. We don't know how short it's gonna be. But if you only had a week to live, I bet you wouldn't allow yourself to suffer over a little crap that makes you crazy normally. I think you would probably spend time with those you love, you would do what you love, you take on a sunset, you'd smell the air, you would take in everything in those so final true. moments that you possibly do. So my thing is why wait, right? Right? Why wait? Why not just decide that if I start to suffer, I know the solution because suffering is me obsessing about me. You might say, it's not me, I'm worried about my kids because they're not doing well. No, you're worried that you haven't done enough for your kids. It's about <laughs> you still, right? Yes. You know, you're worried about what was done or what you should have done or what shouldn't have done. And you can end that in an instant by becoming aware of it and saying, I have made the most important decision of all. Right. I'm gonna live in a beautiful state. Because here's what's gonna happen. Anybody watching, you may lose a family member, you probably will. Somebody may get cancer. Your business may, the government might change the rules. They might change things radically that you can't even do anything about it. You might go bankrupt. You might get divorced. I don't I'm say anybody will, but no, sure. no one knows what's gonna really happen in your life. Life's full of uncertainty, but here's what you can know. You can decide that what happens, you could have a great time. If somebody like Viktor Frankl could be locked up in Auschwitz and come out of that and experience finding joy in the middle of Auschwitz, then human beings have a capacity they've undersold themselves on. We think that the outside world determines how we feel. If, if people have to behave a certain way, if your husband or your wife or your kids or your coworkers or whoever, your boss, has to behave a certain way for you to be happy, and if they don't, you're unhappy, mm -hmm. then you're always gonna be unhappy, because the more people around you, the more they're gonna change that, because they're all human, right. right? And if you have to be a certain way to be happy, <laughs> you're gonna violate it too. So my invitation is, as great as it is to achieve, more important to enjoy. Right. And if you can enjoy every moment in that state, when you're feeling loving and playful and passionate and curious and awe, you treat other people a hundred times better than when you're feeling frustrated, pissed off, overwhelmed, worried, stressed, or feeling sorry for yourself. Right. You're gonna be a better parent, you're gonna be a better lover, you're gonna be a better business person, you're gonna have a better life. So my soliloquy is decide. Decide today and actually say, what if I cut it off? What if I said, I'm not willing to settle and I'm just gonna live in a beautiful state? Doesn't mean you won't feel bad, it means you won't stay there. You right. instantly change. That's doable. Uh, step by step, ferociously and it's the motto for Blue Origin. Um, and uh, uh, basically, you can't skip steps. You have to put one foot in front of the other. Things take time. Uh, you, there are no shortcuts. And, uh, but, uh, but you want to do those steps with you know, passion and ferocity. I think everybody has their own uh, passion, their own thing that they're interested in. And you're very alert to the things that that are in the sphere of influence of that passion.